chaotic, bombastic, audacious, vivacious. All right, Pablo Picasso fans, are you ready for us to guess? What's up, you're watching Hive Mind, the most disgusting show on the internet. My name is Riley Zoltz, and my adorable co-host, Graydon. Screenshot this. Use it as your wallpaper. Today we're doing our best to live in the MoMA. This is... Guess, Guess the, the album, album cover from, from the artist's other art. If you didn't see the other ones, here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna see a few pieces by one artist and try to guess which iconic album cover they created. One point for each one we get right. Me versus Graydon versus you. Jaden in Madison, Indiana. Who's your daddies, Jaden? It's us. All right, before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more. HiveMindTV.com for our merch. We also got our drop with coat still available. It is on the screen. It's in the description. We've also got our Patreon link down there. It's the best way you can support us. It's only $5 a month. And we've got our cameo if you want a special message from us. But most importantly, before we get into it, today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Beatopia. We'll tell you a little bit more about Beatopia later in the video. Let's look at some of these great pieces of art. All right, number one, we've got. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Little bit of a, a gimme point here, it seems like. It's not that obvious to me. I think if you know, you know, like Pusha T always says. He says that? Yeah. That's kind of hard. I Y K Y K. I Y K Y K. I Y K. That's actually how you spell ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. 1969. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, that vicious brew awoke in something inside of me I wish I could put back to bed. Three, two, one. Anti, Rihanna. That's what I went with. It is Anti by Rihanna. Yeah. Riri. Riri. Do you love me? Yeah, so the, the crown over the eyes and like the red and black and white color palette, it's very like on the nose. It's like yeah. all from the same series. Oh yeah, there you go. Yep. How about that shit? I always thought it looked like the shape of the state of Ohio on there. It low key is. I think it is, the Ohio River. That's fucking fire. Grant, what do you know about this artist? The artist's name is Roy Natchum. Mm. Uh, it was introduced to Rihanna by Jay-Z. Mm. He's a fan of his work. Um, he says, sometimes we're running around the world today, running after achievement after achievement. The crown is overseed and covering and what we're supposed to see, but you can't see success. Oh, interesting. I don't get it, but I like it. So it's like the idea of achievement kind of clouding your vision. You're always chasing the crown, but it clouds your vision of what's really important in life. Jadedness. Jay-Z. Oh, I own a Picasso. Get fucked, Jay-Z. Next we've got, oh shit. We're focusing on the figurine aspect of these. Oh, okay. So these are all action figures. These are pictures of things that this person's built. That first one is crazy. Yeah, it looks like Reservoir Dogs or something almost. Yeah, I was going to say like a Tarantino movie sure. mixed with like a Radiohead music video from the 90s. Yeah, the bottom right kind of looks like a Tarantino movie too. <laughs> Oh, I got. It. I see what you're doing. He fucks with feet. Yeah, he's kind of next. Dan Schneider, they got him out of here. Mm -hmm. And I think Tarantino's next. If you like feet, you're a creep. I, that's all I'll say it. Come on. You can like feet, but like don't go further than that. It seems like they have a tendency. What do you mean? It's go a for gateway it? drug. Oh, okay. you know what I mean. <laughs> feet are a gateway drug to worse things. Like worse things that I I'm not gonna mention that stuff on our channel. Like money embezzlement and stuff. Uh uh. Drunk driving. Drunk driving is sick. What do you mean? <laughs> Three, two, one. Rodeo. Travis Scott. I put Astro World. It is Rodeo by Travis Scott. <laughs> Shit! The action figure. It's pronounced Rodeo. <laughs> I almost... <laughs> yeah, the action figure, this whole like aesthetic for this rollout was really cool. Yeah. It was so simple. I don't know. There's some... And now I, I'm like permanently thinking about Travis Scott as like a plastic man. His branding has always been outstanding. Like almost better than his music. I don't think so. I mean, I like his music. It's really good, but like his aesthetics carry a lot of weight, like more than mm -hmm. the average artist. I mean, it carries him definitely above a lot of artists in this generation. Mm -hmm. like when people talk about how there aren't like new legends and stuff, yeah. Travis Scott like propelled himself into that space with production, branding, and like culture. Yeah. Like creating a culture around his music of like raging and mosh pits. And shoes. And McDonald's. Grant, what do you got? Uh, the photo was taken by Kevin Amato, but the action figures were made by Dan Chung. The first action figure he made was for Jackie Chan on the set of Rush Hour. Whoa. Which I thought was pretty funny. He got an email from uh, out of the blue from Travis Scott's camp and found himself at Travis's place after being told it was going to be used for promotional purposes for the album. He sculpts every figure out of wax by hand. Damn. Wax figures by hand. That's cool. You ever seen House of Wax? No. I, well, no, wait, no. I did watch it when I was a kid. I remember like everybody in my school freaking yeah. out about it. Paris Hilton. Yeah. Great horror movie. <laughs> it's a great roadhead scene in it too. It's pronounced roadhead. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Oh, shit. Oh, God. It's getting super trippy here. Oh, shit. That last one's not even, like, behaving with the borders. 
pieces of art like this always look so like intricate and beautiful and trippy. And then you go to find out like the artist just like drops a ball in like a bucket of paint yeah. and like takes the photo or something. It's always like some weird practical way to like capture an image like this. Or nowadays it's a digital artist who is literally like coding a plugin that he doesn't know what it's going to do and yeah. it's just going to fuck it up. And then yeah. he just tries that like a hundred times until he gets cool results. Yeah, it's weird. I think that's an important step in creativity and it's just as important and creative as some someone deciding like they're going to paint realistic mountains again, you know, right. that's been done. And it is really hard to intentionally do something abstract. You almost need to like trick it into happening. Three, two, one. I put Atrocity Exhibition by Danny Brown. I put Future Nostalgia, Dua Lipa. It is Atrocity Exhibition by Danny Brown. Yes. Yeah. That was kind of just a guess, but it does look a little bit like it. And I mm -hmm. could see how they would use this method to make that album cover, Yeah. you know? Atrocity Exhibition named after a Joy Division song. How about that? Yeah. Uh, I don't have a lot on this guy. His name's uh, Tim Sakenti. Okay. Uh, he also worked a lot with Run the Jewels and did Run the Jewels 4 album cover as well. Oh. well Oh, nice. cool. You know, the other day I bought a pen with aromatic ink to sign autographs because mm -hmm. it's important to have a signature scent. <laughs> Next, we've got somebody's painting. <laughs> Van Gogh over here. We got a real Claude Monet on our hands. So a very distinct style here, though. It looks like some watercolor or watercolor inspired work. Nature is a big theme going on here. Mm -hmm. The wild, lack of civilization, void of infrastructure and buildings and the eyesores created by mankind. Mm -hmm. A natural nirvana, a place where souls can run free in a primal state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A place where you don't have to put on a suit and drive in some big clunky metal machine over to mm -hmm. a place where you do work that nobody cares about that <laughs> makes the world a worse place. And clovers grow through your toes. I can run with the sheep, eat seeds, berries. People. Kill. What? <laughs> what? What'd you say? I didn't, you said people. No, I'm just looking at the, maybe there's people in that one. <laughs> It's fucking stupid. What? I don't know who it is, bro. That's not, it doesn't make it stupid. It's just another game we play. It's fun. We learn. Art sucks. Art does not suck. Some, well, of, it, it. some of it does. Yeah. Hate art. I just want to look at formulas. Math. What? I just want to see numbers, man. None of this shit makes sense. Like, what's the cosine of a river? I don't know. <laughs> Why? You like <laughs> cosines and tangents? Yes. Well, I know you like tangents. I mean, I'm talking, Ouch. Talking, Ouch. To you. talking to you takes like an hour and a half to tell one story because you have so many tangents, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know you like tangents and you've been waiting for that Joe Rogan cosine, but I didn't know you were so into formulas. <laughs> and I know you loved Mel Gibson in science, but I didn't know you were so into math and the long formulas that come along with doing math. I always thought you were more of an art guy. I liked Joaquin Phoenix in science. I didn't like Mel Gibson, necessarily. Three, two, one. I put The Lost Boy by Corday. I put Exeter by Blade. <clears throat> This is House of Sugar, Rocket, Beach Music, DSU, and now God Save the Animals by Alex G. This is Rachel Gina Scully. I thought about Alex G's artwork. I pictured the parrot, and I kind of see the similarities in the brush strokes, and even like the color palettes are kind of yeah. the same. Yeah. Wow, that is really cool though. I didn't know that her other work looked like this because the early stuff even has like almost a meme quality to it. Yeah. Like with the type just kind of on top of a painting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, that's awesome. She's very talented. Yeah, really good. And the early days of Alex G's old music, he would like look around her studio and take photos of her art and be like, hey, can I use this? And she'd be like, I don't give a shit. And he just end up using those pieces for his album covers. And now it's more like thought out, obviously. Sure. At the time, he just like snapped photos and just used them for his music, which is really funny. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. Because like rules and trick definitely don't seem like they're specifically for those albums or even those album names. But then like by the time you get to Rocket, you can tell they had planned it out together. Yeah. Like yeah. that looked like that for a reason. And and House of Sugar, same thing. And especially the new one. Yeah. So next. Interesting. We got Getty <laughs> images here. It's literally just like paparazzi photos. Not even like paparazzi, literally just like award show photos. What we're focusing on here is the outfits that they're wearing. Oh. Oh, okay, so these, these outfits were made by the person who made this album cover? Correct. So we got Meryl Streep, Queen of the Oscars. We got Kanye West, King of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And Nicki Minaj. And then Beyonce. Beautiful people. These outfits were made by the person who made an album cover. Virgil? Meryl's in that Virgil? <laughs> Me and Meryl Streep got one. Those are the only two. 
I remember when me and Meryl used to split eight balls and go out to the disco. You and Meryl Streep? Last summer. That's She's very old to be doing this. Last summer there was a disco? Her plug has that pure shit. You can do it as old as you want to be. Okay. She does it and works out. Meryl Streep, man? What? Not anymore. She went to rehab over Christmas and I missed my snow buddy. Snow buddy. That's, you call Meryl Streep your snow buddy? Because we <laughs> used to split eight balls together. I yeah. understand, but it's just like... She's my snow buddy. How you never mentioned this? How was this last summer that you're going to a disco and doing cocaine with old woman Meryl Streep? Oh, now she's an old woman? She Age is. is but a number, Riley. I, well, sure, yeah. When you're blasted off that pure shit in the disco, you would have thought she was 18. Three, two, one. I put Jeffrey. That's what I put. This is Watch the Throne by Kanye and Jay-Z. So it is Virgil. It oh, is. Oh no, it's not Virgil. Virgil is the art director for it. This guy actually designed and made the album cover. Oh, oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Was this constructed or is this made digitally? It was constructed. So there's a physical thing that is this. It's like a, it's foil or something. That's awesome. What's the name? This dude's name is Ricardo Tishi. Uh, oh, he, Future says Ricardo Tishi. I forget what song Future says that in, but yeah, okay, interesting. He's a huge friend with all the big rappers. He used to work for Gavinci and now he works for Burberry. That seems to be the thing with Virgil. Like, there's always somebody else who was working on it with him. Sure. You know, Virgil was a brilliant mom. Yeah. I mean, hits and misses in Virgil's career, but when he has an idea and it gets executed, it's like nobody else could think of that right. idea, you know? All right, before we get to the next one, do you want to tell them about our sponsor, Beatopia? <laughs> Let's do it. That's right. Today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Beatopia. Beatopia is the first beat subscription website for rappers and singers. It's basically Netflix for beats. So you're a rapper or singer probably, and say you've been scouring the internet trying to find beats to put your vocals on top of. You find one and it's not so good, then you find a really good one and it's super expensive, and then you feel like you can't clear it and the whole thing. And then all of a sudden, you decide, no more beats. I'm just putting out acapella music. Oh. And then nobody likes that. Oh. Everybody wants to hear a good beat. Yeah. And where can you get good beats, Graydon? Beatopia! Beat the heat with Beatopia. <laughs> with Beatopia, it's simple. Your subscription is $15 a month, and that includes five full MP3, wave, and stem downloads. And it's one simple license. You can upload anywhere, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, and you can get unlimited streams without paying extra. That means if your song blows up, you're making that money. That's your cake, boss. All beats on Beatopia are curated and professionally produced and mixed. Producer credits include Kaylani, Katie Perry, Biebs, Gunna, Lil Pump, Skepta, Polo G, Ty Dolla Sign, Wizkid, Money Bag Yo, and my favorite of all, many more. Ooh, he's gas. <laughs> Whether you're looking for psychedelic rage beats, or some jazzy boom bap, sinister plug and B, some grungy trap metal, tropical future bass, some hyper noise folk, or just some sweet, simple piano ballads. Beatopia has it all. You can make any kind of music you want over there. And we have a special deal for Hivemind viewers only. One dollar for the first month using code Hivemind on Beatopia's website, which is linked in description. And don't forget to check out the quality of the beats over on Beatopia.com. Link in description. Thank you, Beatopia, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. We're back, and we're better than we were before. Yeah, speak for yourself. Trust me, like we're like a second half ball club. <laughs> Whatever you say, coach. Is this photography? Yes. Wow, that's crazy. The bottom left one, where could that be? Is that at Mordor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how are you getting to these places to take these photographs? And what is that, a fire angel in the top right? You know who's a fire angel? Shohei. Oh, man. Man, that guy plays both ways. Wouldn't it be cool if he was bi in real life too? Just for like the thing of bats for both sides or whatever, switch yeah. hater, like that's stupid. Plays for both teams. Base <laughs> baseball and bisexuality have had enough connect. Like people need to stop. It's like, oh, he bats for both teams. He's yeah. a switch hitter. Like, yeah. shut up. It's not that's, all about baseball. Well, it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense in people's heads, I guess, but it's Especially just... to the straight man. The straight man, you know, loves baseball and he needs a good sports analogy to help understand sexual in today's world. <laughs> I guess that's true. Sports yeah. analogies are helpful. Straight guys are dumb. And they need sports analogies. They're dumb narcissists. Dumb narcissists. Yeah. I've been saying that for a while. Straight men are dumb narcissists. <laughs> Facts. Let's, let's generalize for a second. Please. Let's paint with a broad brush while we're playing an art game. Why don't you? They can only think about themselves and the things that they know. Mm -hmm. And when they get an analogy, that one will stick with them. They'll yeah. repeat it every single time somebody brings something up. Like their friend is like, nah, I just don't understand these bisexuals. It's like, okay, I get gays, you know? What do you mean bisexual? And then that guy's like, well, you know baseball, right? <laughs> Do I? You know, some guys can bat left and bat right. Well, I guess you're right. Some of my favorite players of all time have batted 
on both sides of the plate. <laughs> uh-huh. So it's like that, you know? Okay. Yeah. I get it. It gives you an advantage against the defense. <laughs> if the pitcher's righty, you go up left. You know what? My understanding of baseball has helped me become a more tolerant person. <laughs> Three, two, one. The Slow Rush by Tim Impala. Me too. It is the Slow Rush by Tan and Paula. The sand in the room is what got me. If I just got the other three, I wouldn't have been able to. Wow, I didn't even notice there was sand in the top left room. Really? I thought that was just like a messed up floor. I don't see that well. I realized this was sand, probably. And so that's kind of what led me there. But I didn't, now that you just pointed that out, I just realized there's sand in that room. So you did guess without knowing. Yeah. That's, that's impressive. <laughs> Thanks. See, I, I really, that's crazy. All right, what do you know about this one, Grant? Photos by Neil Krug. <laughs> That's not his name. That's Neil his name. Krug. Kevin Parker had to travel to a ghost town in Namibia, southwestern Africa, and they got an abandoned home and they filled it, the production crew filled it with sand to take the photo. So wait a minute, is the one on the top left, do you know if that was taken at the same shoot? It, it was. Oh, okay. For anything else, yeah. Wow, because I was gonna say, like, has Neil Krug been doing this? Like he yeah. just fills <laughs> houses with sand, but that was just taken from the same shoot. That's yeah. cool. That is cool. It's a great album cover. I mean, yeah, it's fantastic. It's fantastic beautiful. album cover. And as always, you got the microgramma text that's on every Tame Impala album cover. My grandma's in her late 90s and she shrunk a lot, so I kind of got a microgramma too. Yeah. <laughs> Next one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Some more photography. Very colorful. Really cool. Man, that top right one is crazy. Someone jumping in motion, the green. Yeah. With the green shorts. Oh, brother. Do you think if we freed every animal in every zoo across the globe, they would seek revenge? I don't really think they seek anything. I think it would be chaos, but I don't think that like they would collectively have an idea of like, we've been imprisoned. Let's take over these people. That's I think true. some of them would just eat people because that's like their instinct, I yeah. guess. Like the penguins. No, the penguins. <laughs> the prairie dogs. The penguins wouldn't make it like an hour. The, like the thing is that was, like the zoo, well, if you let them all out at the same time, a lot of them are just going to stay there and eat each other. <laughs> yeah. like, before they even get to the people, the lions are going to eat like a bunch of penguins. Yeah. The tigers are going to eat little foxes or whatever they got on mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. They fox in the zoo sometimes. Um, honestly, I feel like the hippos would probably go hang out in the butterfly house for a while, just to appreciate their beautiful forms. The and hippos their like wings. that shit. Yeah, they appreciate natural beauty. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> they'd probably just do a lot of shit in the zoo for a while. That's true. Yeah. They're not like raiding a city nearby. No, they would when they get hungry again. Mm-hmm. But for all you animal activists out there thinking about freeing all the animals in the zoo worldwide, don't. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably be doing more harm than good. We should make a zoo for, like, house pets. Isn't that just pet smart? Three, two, one. I put The Forever Story by Jid. I put Gemini Rights by Steve Lacey. This is God Did by DJ Khaled. Really? DJ. The one with the little Damn. tear on it. Whoa, that does not look like it. I mean, like, I guess yeah. it's just a close-up of his face, so it's, there's not much character to, like, the rest of the photo, but... <sighs> Wow, I was did not. I was nowhere near that. No, I'm dumbfounded. God, wow. DJ Khaled's beautiful and sexy though. <laughs> I mean, he's got like that carved up beard line. He looks yeah. really good. I hate like the skin he leaves open in the chin though. You know what oh, I, mean? I like it. Looks like balls. <laughs> Thank you, DJ Khaled. Thank you, DJ Khaled. We love you. God, dude. That tear, is that real tear? <laughs> oh man, this is really cool. This is my kind of style. It looks like it's like manipulated photography at certain points, but then others, it looks like fully digitally rendered. Yeah. Definitely very colorful. Chaotic. Bombastic. Audacious. Vivacious. Flamboyant. Effervescent. Scintillating. All right, Pablo Picasso fans, are you ready for us to guess? Three, two, one. But 2.5 by Amine. I ran it back with Steve Lacey's Gemini Rights. It is Gemini Rights yes. by Steve Lacey. I mean, I knew that had to be in the game. Yeah. It's like just a great album right now. It's new, it's fresh, we haven't done it. And I jumped the gun on the photography one. It was the a little too one, serious. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was God did. And now we got to the messed up faces and I was like, oh, this is probably it. Steve and Steve did. <laughs> Steve did. I don't think Gemini should have rights, by the way. Really? Yeah. It's a couple other signs I don't think should either. Okay, let's get them. Sagittarius. Are, you're one of them. Yeah, absolutely. And look what's happened with him. That's true. Yeah. That sucks, yeah. So, uh-huh. And you're Aries. dating a Gemini, aren't you? Yep. Wh- oh, exactly. What yeah. the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to take rights away from your partner and yourself? Yep. <laughs> That's weird. We're troublemakers. Yeah, this art's made by Frank Dory and Victor H. Frank Dory also made the single cover for Charmander by Amine. And had a small hand in making Amine's 2.5 album cover, but the majority of the, con- the contribution was done by Nick Holliday, Kevin Abstract's boyfriend. 
Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nick Holiday does a lot of cool work, but yeah. I feel like I almost deserve a point for that, but that's fine. I feel like you. it's funny because like I literally had both albums stacked on top of each other, and I took him away because he did the majority of the work on this album, and Victor helped with the album. Right. But the other one is the other way around. Like, he contributed to it, but he didn't actually, like, make the album cover. I feel that, it's yeah. It's Waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great album cover. It's very interesting to me. I was thinking about it the other day, and I was like, it's like a recycling song. Sign, but with devil horns on it, kind of. Yeah, sure. But it's like used as a cutout, which has like a different picture of Steve below this picture of Steve. Yeah, you get like a collage, almost Basquiat, like 90s, 80s expressionism vibe going mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Shout out Steve. Steve. Lacey. If you don't understand that reference, go over to our second channel, Hive Mind Unlimited, and check out the video guessing our fans' favorite artists from their pictures. That's a reference to that video. Yeah, Snoop Dogg watched it, so why haven't you? We, I don't, we don't know that for sure. We have a hunch. Next, now this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. So this is someone who's done recreations of other iconic album covers. So they've yeah. done Damn, Jack Boys, Lil Boat 2, mm -hmm. and Blonde, but in a very specific style. Yeah, it's really nice. So it's somebody who was doing like fan art that transitioned to doing the actual official artwork for somebody. Yeah, it's weird. It's almost like anxiety provoking. Everything has like a twitch to it. It looks like it's moving a little bit. A lot bit. of texture. Yeah, a little shaky. You know what I was thinking about the other day? What? Weeping Willow is a little bit of a dramatic name for a tree, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I understand when somebody sees it and they're like that, but it's just like weeping. <laughs> like No other trees have the adjective attached to them. You have birch, oak, redwood, pine, walnut. Yeah, it's like if they named it like the sobbing sycamore. Yeah. It's like <laughs> sobbing, weeping. Like it's a tree. It yeah. doesn't do anything. <laughs> the ignorant oak. <laughs> Three, two, one. I put Red Veil, Learn to Swim. I put Curtain Call 2 by Eminem. <laughs> this is Learn to Swim by Red Veil. <laughs> yeah, the style is just unmistakable. I didn't know that I they were like a, like a fan artist first. What do you got on this? The artist's name is Alina and they're from Russia. That's about all I know about it. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. I care to know nothing more about anyone from Russia. Here we go. Very interesting photography here. This is awesome. I love that bottom right one. Yeah, the bottom right one is so cool. I love when, I don't know what it is, but I really like when you can see the lights and the equipment inside of a studio photo mm -hmm. like that, when the set is done so well, yeah. that you can see everything acting on it. I really like that. Yeah, I like it too. Mm -hmm. I like the angle a lot on that top right one. And let me guess, the artwork we're guessing is like an egg or something. <laughs> I mean, I fuck with some of the Mr. Beast videos. What the fuck does he know about burgers? <laughs> Whatever, dude. You just don't get Mr. Beast. He's like on a different plane. He flies private. That's what I'm say, saying. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. I put sometimes I might be introvert, little Sims. I put Harry House. This is Harry's house by Harry Styles. Oh my gosh, wow. That motherfucker's famous as shit. Bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Holy smokes. Everyone and their mom has been into that tour. It's like the goddamn carnival. Him and Jack Harlow right now. Those tours are must see TV, apparently. Wow, I really got the sometimes I might be introvert from the yellow in the bottom right. I can know? see that. I yeah. thought you had me beat square to nuts. Soup to nuts. Sorry. From soup to nuts. I thought you had me beat. Is that a phrase that people say? Absolutely. From you ever heard soup that? to nuts? You never heard that? No. Yeah, it's like how uh, old school meal would go. You know, when you had nine courses, you would start with a soup and your dessert was often like a sweet nut. <laughs> a sweet nut. A sweet nut? I know on the heels of saying Jack Harlow's tour and stuff, your mind is in the gutter, but I'm explaining antiquity times. <laughs> And they did not <laughs> swallow loads back then. Swallowing loads is new. And deep throating. Really? No, that one's been around for a while. <laughs> okay. But I'm sure there are some new popular sexual acts that they didn't do back in the day. Okay. But deep throating, that's been done. <laughs> oh, there it is. Upside down. Oh, wait, did he staple all this shit to the ceiling or whatever? Yeah. What? In the Harry's house thing. Is it all like stapled to the ceiling and shit? No. Oh, it's not? No, it's hot glued. Hot glued. Yeah, oh, hot glued. oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Hannah Moon took the photo, and the set designer is named Patience Harding. Ah, oh, Patience is a great name. It's like Dawn. I love that name too. Dawn. Patience. Ruffles. Wonder Bread. Glue stick. Missile. Grant. Ball cap. Sandalwood. We're gonna have a beautiful family one day. Independently. What do you mean? We'll have beautiful families one day, and they'll be friends. Hopefully. We won't force them. Independently, though. I mean, I would like to have kids with somebody. I feel like it's gonna be hard to do independently. Just not with me. 
That's oh, yeah, saying. no, I understand that. I mean, sure. Unless, of course, you know, things fall into place. But we'll see how it goes. But I'm just saying, like, independently would be a bad, like, I don't want to be a single dad. I wouldn't mind. You wouldn't mind being a single dad? No, not if my wife died in a tragic way where everyone pitied me. <laughs> Do you get, like, pity casseroles and stuff? And fucks. Pity fucks. <laughs> I'd be, like, crying at a restaurant with, like, eight kids, just eating, devouring chicken fingers and lasagna. And, I'm like, <laughs> and they're like, what's wrong? You seem to have such a beautiful family. And I'm like, she was torn apart by the machines. And they're like, what? And I'm like, she was such a brave woman. It wasn't even her battle to fight in that war, but she chose to fight the machines in Nova Scotia. And they're like, oh my God, your wife and mother to your child volunteered for the robot war in Nova Scotia? And I'll be like, yeah. And then they'll want to fuck you. Maybe, sometimes, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah. It's a hypothetical. I'm yeah. just saying if it worked out like that, I wouldn't mind it. Sexual favors. Pity suck. Last one. You have a shot to tie me, and then what's gonna happen? I'll rip your Adam's apple out and eat it like a Honeycrisp. Whoa. We got some kind of like wonky Photoshop work here. This is advanced work though. It's almost collage, but it's definitely done digitally. It does very much seem like the advancement of the very popular graphic design style for concept rap album covers on the yeah. internet. Kind of a lot of the a lot of the tropes of those things is money and knives. <laughs> a knife going through money, a stack of money next to a knife, mm -hmm. maybe a gun or a dove. And yeah. all of those are present here. So why do pigs have uh, why are pigs called warthogs? Pigs aren't called warthogs. Why is the type of pig that's a warthog called a war why do they call it a warthog? Well it's in the swine swine family and hog is a general term for all swine. True. And I'm sure it's because it's like bumpy skin. It has bumpy skin? I'm sure those things are beasts. Not so. in the movie. <laughs> oh well yeah, what's his name? Pumba? Yeah. Yeah, he's smooth and nice. In real life, they're like one of the most aggressive, evil, nasty little critters. I don't know, he's pretty lovable in the movie. Yes, in the movie, he's lovable. So is fucking Simba. Simba would rip your dick off if you met him in real life. <laughs> Eat it like a fucking summer sausage. I mean, are you talking like young Simba or like Matthew Broderick? Either way. Matthew Broderick's gonna rip my dick off? Facts. I don't think that's gonna happen, man. That's what you think, Why man. Why are they called war dogs, though? I'm What's sure the it's because they're bumpy. He was not bumpy in the movie. <laughs> that's a... <laughs> Fucking Disney movie. And it's a good one too. Yes, it was. Three, two, one. Put culture three. I put savage mode two. It is culture one, two, and three. Nice. Ah, Board so clap. Nice. It's just the dove and the red. And I don't like that album cover that much. I'm sorry if the artist is watching, but it's not my favorite album cover. Snoop Dogg's watching. Snoop, what's up? <laughs> well, six to four is our final score. I hope you liked this game and I hope you learned a little bit about the artists behind some of your favorite album covers. If you want us to play it again, let us know down in the comment section. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, subscribe to our second channel. Our Patreon is linked down in the description along with the, all the other stuff I said at the beginning. And thank you to Beatopia for sponsoring this video. Link in the description, use the code HIVEMIND to get your first month of Beatopia for $1. Other than that, Graydon, you want to leave these wonderful people some advice to leave or live their lives by? A snail's pace in a lion's race. Don't mistake. You'll still finish first place. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been I, My TV. We love you, appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Fuck Bow. you, Snoop Dogg. What? <laughs> I don't know. He's a Chargers fan. Put a smile on, buddy. You're being a Deborah Downey. Damn, are your nipples hard too? <laughs> what? Never mind. The Minnesota Vicodins. American people, uh, that body of yours is just absurd. <laughs> You're like 50 times hotter in person. And uh, <laughs> so am I. As long as she died in a heroic, tragic, brutal, and graphic way. <laughs> <laughs>